Welcome back everyone. In the first video of this pre-rendering section, I mentioned there are two forms of pre-rendering, static generation and server-side rendering. What we have learned so far is only the first form, which is static generation. As the name indicates, the HTML is statically generated at build time. The build page is then cached and reused for each request. Of course, we do have exceptions. For a dynamic page with get static paths and fallback set to true, the page is not generated at build time, but is generated on the initial request. With incremental static regeneration, a page can be regenerated for a request after the revalidation time has elapsed. But in both these cases, we do serve the statically generated HTML pages, even if it is for a small duration of time, as is the case of ISR. So with the first form of pre-rendering, for the most part, pages are generated using get static props when you build the project. But in doing this, we come across two problems. Let me help you understand what they are with simple examples. The first problem is that we cannot fetch data at request time. Now, why is this a problem? Well, with not being able to fetch data per request, we run into the problem of stale data. Let's say we are building a news website. The content is very dynamic in the sense that news articles can be published almost every second. Given the nature of the content of such a website, you simply cannot afford to have stale data. Good static props will fetch the news at build time, which is not at all suitable. Get static paths will help fetch the data on the initial request, but it is then cached for subsequent requests. That is no good either. Incremental static regeneration can help, but if revalidate is one second, we still might not always see the most up-to-date news when the regeneration is happening in the background. And if your intention is to revalidate less than every second for a website, where a user is visiting almost every second, there simply is no point in having ISR. You would much rather fetch the data on the client side by making a get request from the component. However, in doing so, you've lost the benefits of SEO. And for a news publishing website, SEO is of the utmost importance and simply cannot be neglected. So the first problem with static generation is that we cannot fetch data per request and pre-render. The second problem is that we don't get access to the incoming request if the page is pre-rendered at build time. This becomes a problem when the data that needs to be fetched is specific to a user. Let's say we are building a website similar to Twitter. As a user, I should be able to see tweets that are personalized based on my interests. However, the tweets that I see also need to be SEO friendly as it is public content that anyone in the world can see by searching in Google or other search engines. To fetch tweets specific to the user, we need the user ID. And that can be obtained only if we have access to the incoming request. For example, the user ID can be part of request cookies, which we can extract and use to fetch data specific to that user. Without access to the incoming request, it becomes difficult to build a page similar to a Twitter feed. You could do it client side with use effect, for example, but that means you again miss out on SEO. So the second problem with static generation is that we cannot fetch data that is user specific and pre-render a page. To overcome these problems, Next.js offers the second form of pre-rendering, which is server-side rendering. With SSR, 
Next.js allows you to pre-render a page not at build time, but at request time. So the HTML is generated for every incoming request. Here is an image of SSR from the Next.js documentation. A user makes a request to a page. Next.js fetches the external data for that specific request, generates the HTML, and finally sends it to the browser. All right, we now understand that SSR is a form of pre-rendering where the HTML is generated at request time. We also learned that SSR is required when you need to fetch data per request and also when you need to fetch personalized data. Of course, keeping in mind SEO. So we now know what is SSR and why is it required? The next question is how? How does Next.js make it possible to fetch data at request time? Or how does Next.js make it possible to get access to the incoming request, which will facilitate fetching data personalized for a user? Let's understand that in the next video.